I want to welcome everyone out there who's joining us virtually this morning, whether you are across the United States, around the globe, or right here in the Denver metro area. We are glad that you're joining us. I'm not preaching today, though. You should know this. Our senior pastor, Steve Foos Benson, is preaching, but he is sick. So stay tuned because it is a very interesting sermon today. <laughs> it really is. I'm not joking here, okay? You're all going, what in the world's going on? I'm going to read the scripture passage to save Steve some of his voice. And if he, uh, if he does happen to get up here and halfway through the sermon does tend to fall over, I'm just going to stand up and deliver the rest of the sermon, and we'll call 911 after he's done. So our scripture passage this morning comes from Numbers chapter 22. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went off with the nobleman from Moab. As he was going, though, God's anger flared, and the angel of God stood in the road to block his way. And Balaam was riding his donkey, accompanied by his two servants. And when the donkey saw the angel blocking the road and brandishing a sword, she veered off the road into the ditch. Balaam beat the donkey and got her back on the road. But as they were going through a vineyard with a fence on either side, The donkey again saw God's angel blocking the way and veered into the fence, crushing Balaam's foot against the fence. And Balaam hit her again. God's angel blocked the way yet again, a very narrow passage this time. There was no getting through on the right or left. Seeing the angel, Balaam's donkey sat down under him. Balaam lost his temper. He beat the donkey with his stick. And then God gave speech to the donkey something we wish God would do to all animals who are getting beat like this. She said to Balaam, What have I ever done to you that you have beat me these three times? Balaam said, Because you've been playing games with me. If I had a sword, I would have killed you by now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your trusty donkey, on whom you've ridden for years right up until now? Have I ever done anything like this to you before? Have I? Balaam said, no. And God helped Balaam see what was going on. He saw God's angel blocking the way, brandishing a sword, and Balaam fell to the ground, his face in the dirt. And God's angel said to him, why have you beaten your poor donkey these three times? I have come here to block your way because you are getting way ahead of yourself. And the donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If she hadn't, I would have killed you by this time, but not the donkey. I would have let her off. Balaam said to God's angel, I have sinned. I had no idea you were standing in the road blocking my way. If you don't like what I'm doing, I'll head back. God's angel said to Balaam, go ahead and go with them, but only say what I'll tell you to say. Absolutely no other word. And there our scripture text ends. Let us consider how we'll apply these words to our lives this morning. The Reverend Dr. Steve Foos Benson. I said, thing is, oh, very, I can't hear myself. And so if you can't hear me, uh, I can't regulate my voice. People at the 8 o'clock said they, they couldn't hear me. So if you can't hear me, put your, put your hand up so I can learn to regulate my voice. So anyways, the Bahamas. Bahamas were interesting. But, you know, a family wedding is always interesting, right, right, right? Uh, a lot of fun, especially when everybody travels across the country to be together. And you think you go in the Bahamas, warm weather. Well, a, 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 a tropical depression moved in, and um, it was so cold. It was so cold. Uh, The Bahamians were wearing down coats, ski caps, and gloves, and we were in the Bahamas. So we had shorts, sandals, and and Hawaiian shirts. And even though it was uh, was cold, I was going to swim in the ocean. I was going to swim with the pigs. Go on my Facebook page, you can see us swimming with the pigs. Some people go there to swim with the dolphins. I wanted to swim with the pigs. It was a lot of fun. Went snorkeling and froze, and I think in the whole process of going there and coming back, I, I got a bug, and I was, I was doing a lot better, 
as you might be wondering, well, why am I in church? It was kind of a funky thing um, with preaching. I mean, it's, Sunday comes 52 times a year, whether you like it or not. Whether you're ready or not, here comes Sunday. And so as preachers, we have to make a call as far as at one point do you call your colleague and say, you're up. Well, yes, sir, it's feeling fine, feeling good. Um, last night, okay. And then about 4 a.m., it was like a truck ran over me. And so by then I realized it was too late. Uh, so I came down to the 8 o'clock. If I just sit, I'm fine. Um, but this might be, I think, my last service. Yeah, yeah. Last and then I'm going to go home. And so you get to preach at 11 o'clock. But the reason why I wanted to do this, because this is a, a powerful message. Um, you're you're going to end today wondering, what was that all about? And, and you're not going to like this message. Like is for Facebook. You know, like is not necessarily a way to respond to preaching. Because, you know, I, I want you to, to think about this. You know, and, and there's, there's three questions that I want you to, to walk away from. I want you to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself, am I like Balaam? Am I like the donkey? Or am I like the angel? Those are your three questions. Those are your, that's your walk away today. And it's a two-part sermon. It's a two-part sermon. I'm actually going to preach next Sunday right where I left off. I'm going to use the exact same passage uh, next week. So, uh, so it's two-point. Okay, uh, I'm not even going to touch the remote. I'm going to let Justin touch the remote. I want you to begin by thinking, uh, where, where are you beating your head against the wall in your life? Where are you beating your head against the wall? Maybe it's with your job. And you, and, you, and you think, you know, if I just work hard enough, if I just put in enough hours, if I just bring enough intensity, that, you know, that, um, that it's going to be good. You know what? I am not feeling good all of a sudden. Um, I'm going to step out. I am not feeling good. And I'm going to keep on pushing. Do you, do you have this sermon? I got it. Okay. Sorry, everybody. All of a sudden, I went, wow, I am not feeling good. Someone go check on him, too. Somebody. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> so where are you banging your head up against the wall? Seriously, what is it in your life? Is it your job? Is it your finances right now? Are you trying to figure out how in the world are we and my family and my household going to make it? Maybe it's next week. Maybe it's next month. Maybe it's over this whole next year. Maybe you're banging your head up against the wall right there. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's you and a spouse, you and a significant other. Maybe it's you and your children. And children, especially as they get older, you're banging your head up against the wall. And maybe your child's even 52 and you're still banging your head up against the wall. Maybe it's your parents. Right? Maybe it's your parents up there. Maybe you're just like, why don't they get it? Why do they, do they not understand me? My 13-year-old brain, come on. Or maybe you're in your 40s or your 50s, and you're wondering why. Why are my parents not getting it? Maybe it's a sibling. Maybe it could be anything, anybody. Maybe it's a health crisis. And you just think, if I knew more, if I found one more web page about my disease, perhaps right then and there I could, and you just continue to bang your head up against the wall as it does not work. And you wonder what to do. Well, our sermon series this past few weeks has been called Thanks for Listening. And Steven Spielberg is supposedly said that if he gets to the gates of heaven, the one thing he wants God to to look at him and say, the simple phrase is, Stephen, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to all the things I was putting in your ear and that you heard the inspiration and that you did something with it. Steven Spielberg, thanks for listening. Have you ever thought about that? What will God say to you? And will God look at you and go, oh yeah, you got it right. You heard my voice here and there and at this time and at this moment, so thanks for listening. Well, Balaam needed a kick in his donkey in order to understand what God was saying to him so that he could listen. And this is a crazy story, right? I mean, 
First of all, it's a talking, talking donkey, which isn't too strange for us. I mean, most of us have seen Shrek 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? I mean, come on, right? Teenagers, you've all seen the Shrek. You all know. I mean, this story that you thought was Disney was taken right out of the Bible, okay? Talking donkey with this belligerent person, right? And the relationship between the two of them and these two, this donkey and Balaam, have been together for a very long time. They were a team. And so, as the scripture says, it was his trusty donkey. And right here in the middle of it, the trusty donkey's taking him down the path and sees this angel of God with sword drawn. And the donkey goes, I'm not going down that path any farther. And veers off to the side. And Balaam beats his donkey. He beats his beloved donkey. Because Balaam believes he knows what needs to happen. And this donkey is not performing the way they're supposed to, or the way she's supposed to. What do you do about that? What do you think about that? I mean, it's this weird story. And yet, it draws and gives us so many life lessons. How often have you paid attention to a story with a talking donkey? Perhaps even in your own life, you've had moments in life where something or someone that normally does not speak into your life all of a sudden does. That something that is totally unexpected looks at you and says, what's your problem? Just stop. Just stop. And so as Steve started out the sermon today, we want you to consider one of these three things. Which one are you? Are you Balaam? The belligerent person who seemingly knows where to go and is going to do everything in the world to do it? Are you the donkey? The donkey who truly does see something along the way, but has no voice most of the time and allows others to push you aside? Or are you three? Are you the angel? Now, normally when we come to Bible, we don't think of ourselves being an angel, right? And yet, I guarantee you, when we get to that slide, many of you will go, yep, that's me. And you won't think it's a good thing. <laughs> so, back to this, back to Balaam. How many of you are the kind of person that when you think you know where you're going, you're going to push you're going to prod, you're going to beat, you are going to yell, you're going to scream, you're going to bully your way into getting your way and getting on down that path because you know. Perhaps you're that way in the workplace. Perhaps you're that way with your friends or your neighbors. Most likely, if you're that kind of person, you're that way with a spouse or your children or your siblings or a parent. This is me. I mean, when we talk about Balaam, I'm Balaam, okay? I have a clear sense of what is supposed to happen, and I'm going to make it happen. And if someone gets in my way, oh, man, I am angry. I am angry, and I'm going to find a way. Even though the donkey's telling me, yo, what's your problem? Just stop. Just stop. And so often the Balaams in life, like myself, get all of these messages that come at us that say, just stop. But we don't listen. We don't listen at all. Then there's the donkeys. The donkeys are seemingly great people, okay? Because you do see stuff. You see stuff along the paths of life. You see things in other people's lives. And a lot of times you don't know how to voice it. You don't maybe have the confidence to speak up. Perhaps you just don't have the ability to say, look, like the donkey. So instead what you do is you take on the burdens of everybody else. You begin to carry the load. 
And perhaps you're doing that today. Perhaps you're the kind of person who's a donkey, and you see the burdens of other people out there. You see the burdens that belong to all kinds of other circumstances, and you go, you know what? I can carry that. That's where I'm going to help. That's what I'm going to do. And seemingly, that seems like a great thing, right? To carry the loads of others and carry their burdens. Here's the thing. Most oftentimes, it's their garbage that you're carrying. It's not something good from them that you're carrying that needs to be carried. Usually, it's their garbage you're carrying. And it gets weighed down and weighed down and weighed down. And you're feeling sort of guilty because you're not being able to carry it as fast as you want or carry it as efficiently as you'd like. And it doesn't seem to be helping the other person. So your solution to that is, I'm going to even carry more. And you make the same mistake and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into carrying this other person's burden until it's almost ready to kill you. And the problem with the donkey is not only is the donkey taking in the abuse, but the donkey, by nature of personality, by nature of the circumstance, is abusing him or herself by continuing to take on the loads and responsibilities of other people that's really just their garbage. So this morning, are you the donkey? This is a great slide. I mean, what can I say? I wish I could take credit for this one. Don't make me drop a house on you. Are you the guardian angel? There are many of you in life who do see things in other people's lives, or you think you do, and you think you know what's right for someone else, and you get in their way. And you go, you're not going to go any farther. I am the voice of God in your life, and you need to stop. And many of you think that it is your role to play the guardian angel in the Balaams of life. As a Balaam myself, I know those people who are the guardian angels, who think that they can stop the Balaams of life. And here's the thing. No one died and made you an angel. Okay? God appoints angels. God's presence in your life is the one that tells the Balaams of life and tells the donkeys of life what's going on. But many of us end up trying to play the role of the angel and telling other people what to do and how to do it and when to do it and when to stop and when to start and when they can speak and when they can't. And when you take on that role, it twists you up, it messes you up, and it messes other people up. It is not your job, it's not your responsibility. You don't have to take on the burden of feeling like you have to make other people do the right things. It's one of the largest problems with Christianity in general. As Christians throughout history, We tend to think that it's our responsibility to police other people. To police people who are not Christian, to police people of other denominations, to police people who are of other religions, to police the world. And it's not. That's not the church's job. That's not Christianity's job. God is present in people's lives. We believe in this God who is everywhere and with all people and loving all people and in their lives. And if we truly believe that, then we have to step back and go, oh, this is God's job, not mine. I'm a human being, and it's okay to be a human being. And it's okay for mistakes to be made. It's okay for other people to make mistakes. And life will go on even if I don't try to get in front of them and try to change things. Are you listening? Are you hearing God's voice? 
Is God looking at you as a Balaam and looking at you and just saying, stop. Stop going down the path that you're going. It will not work. It's not the right place. It's not the right time. You're too early. You're too late. Are you the donkey and God's looking at you and saying, stop. Stop taking on these loads of others. It's just their garbage. That's just their emotional baggage. That's not for you to carry. That's between God and that person and for them to work out. Is God looking at you as you try to play an angel and saying, stop. Just stop. Stop trying to be me. Stop trying to be the presence of God in telling someone what their life should be or should not be. Just stop. Are you listening to God telling you to stop this morning and just take a breath and just take a moment along your journey that you sit back and go, oh, the presence of God is all around. I don't have to make it happen. I don't have to carry the burden. I don't have to guide somebody else. I can just trust God to do what God does best. In the story, Balaam buries himself into the ground. He buries his face into the ground. Now, any of you who know me well know that I'm not good at this. Okay? This is not something I do. Okay? I mean, I can fake humility. I can fake it. Right, John? <laughs> he knows. He was on my hiring committee. <laughs> but actually, doing an actual physical and emotional act where you truly go, you know what? I don't know. I don't know where the path is. I don't know how to do this. I don't know... So I'm not going to take on someone else's burdens. I don't know what's best for your life. If you've ever been to an Islamic prayer center, into a mosque, you know that the entire ritual for them is this right here. And you do it over and over and over again, you prostrate, prostrate yourself. That's a whole nother word. Prostrate yourself. <laughs> and you bow. And you show your humility. And it's this wonderful act. It's wonderful ritual. It's wonderful liturgy of showing and saying, I'm just human. I don't have it all figured out. And I so wish that we had something like that or more like that within our own tradition that says, you know what? Each and every week, I give myself a reminder that I'm just human. And I don't have all the power, and I don't have it all figured out, and I'm not perfect, and I can't carry everyone's stuff. I just can't do it. We have lessons to learn from other people. We have lessons to learn from other cultures. We have lessons to learn from other religions. And that is God's presence in our lives, working in all of these things, if we'll just stop and listen. There's a kind of a secret book out there, it's very controversial, called A Course on Miracles. And this is his first principle right here. I do not understand anything I see. I do not understand anything I see. And something that goes along with that and goes along with that whole Course on Miracles is this idea. Control is an illusion. 
You do not understand anything you see. And control is an illusion. You do not truly have control over anything. You truly don't understand anything that you see. Anytime you think you understand something, you've only gotten a glimmer and a glimpse of a little speck of it. And it's so much more complicated than what our minds can understand. The problem is, is that whether you're a Balaam or a donkey or think you're an angel, with all of it, you think you understand something. And just take a moment and take a breath and go, you know what? I'm just human. It's okay for me not to understand. It's okay for me not to be in control. It's okay that I do not know. And when we take that moment of humility and step back, all of a sudden, we hear the voice of God. We see the beauty of God. We feel the warmth of the love of God in our lives. It begins to pour over us like this amazing grace that comes across. And we go, ah, I am just human. And that is such a great thing. I do not have to be God. I don't have to be God at my work. I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to carry the burdens of my spouse or my children or my parents or my neighbors or my friends. And I certainly don't have to be the one in their life to make sure that they don't mess up or that they go astray or that just fill in the blank. I'm just human. My job is to listen. My job is to love. My job is to bask in the grace that God has given me and given to every person around me. I don't have to make it all happen myself. Let us pray this morning. God, so often, you must laugh at us as we think that we have it figured out or we think we're making something happen, and you laugh. And you pat us on the head and go, good try. God, remind us that we are human. And for all of the greatness and creativity and beauty that exists in our species, we are just a blip on the cosmic radar. And you, you, you are present. You are in control. You are here. You are loving. Let us know that. Let us not attempt to control. Let us not be the kind of people who take on the garbage of others. Let us not be the kind of people who try to be other people's angels. But let us just be human and be okay with that. God, all along, you've been teaching us a prayer. It's all about humanity. It's all about you coming to this earth rather than us having to be celestial and supernatural. It's all about humility and forgiving sins. It's all about just having enough with daily bread. We lift up that prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us in trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.